Super Talk Radio. You're in to all things music. All these people supporting this one dancer, and she was beautiful, and she was almost, I don't know what, some kind of float or something, but they were right. carrying it, and I thought, you know, that is a snapshot of what this business is like. Absolutely. It's not really about the star. It's about a whole machine, how everybody gets it out there, believes in it, gets something from it, you know, and the people that buy it. it it's just a symbol, a person standing on the top, you know Absolutely. what I mean? Welcome to Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Everybody, welcome to Jackie's Groove, and this is Jackie Bertoni, brought to you by the Talk Radio Network. You're into all things music. Guys, it's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday here. Hump day, for the lack of a better word, Wednesday, September the 6th. And I got to tell you guys, I'm proud and privileged today because I've been a fan of this woman for years because she supported the great singers that I've loved over the years. I was recommended her by uh, my uh, my radio, uh, radio mate and my musician brother by the name of Terry Woolman said, you really got to get this girl on. She's amazing. So we tried We tried that last year. Unfortunately, I took ill in the way of back surgery, but we're back better than ever now, and I am so, so pleased to welcome to everybody right now. I want everybody to welcome with open arms and open ears to Jackie's Groove, the beautifully and talented Rosemary Butler. Rosemary, welcome, sweetheart. How are you? Oh, thank you. How's everybody doing today? You know what, man? We're... we're, we're, we're we're all alive, you know. You know, Carol. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm blown away because when I look at your biography and so on, to think that you started out as a bass player. Now, I've got a very, very good friend of mine. Her name is Carol Kay, the original, um, yeah, Wrecking Crew member, uh, and of course, all of her legacies with Sonny and Cher and the Beach Boys and Ronnie Spector. And I want to find out exactly what it was that brought you to bass. Ah, well, you know, I was a big fan of hers, and I had all her records. She had a lot of instructional bass records, and I had all of them and learned a lot from her. Um, I was, uh, let's see, in high school, and um, there were a lot of girls that played piano and guitar, right? but not very many that played bass, and uh, I was in love with Paul McCartney, so he was left-handed, I was left-handed, and I thought, you know, I'm going to give this a try. When I was I really little, like five years old, we um, lived in Orange County, and everybody else was, you know, playing with dolls and playing army men and sports and all that sort of thing. And right. I would jump over the fence and go across the railroad tracks and through an orange grove, and I was at Fender. <laughs> and I, they let me in, and, and they, all the people that were making the guitars and you know, sanding them and, you know, fixing them and everything. Uh, I used to sit on their lap and they would tell me all about, you know, so cool. <laughs> guitars yeah. and basses and they had a whole left, left-handed left room. And, 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 uh, and of, you know. I'm jumping in here because I'm looking at this. You know, you're, here you are, a girl that grew up, if you will, or went to school in Fullerton. I was right on the corner from you. I was born and raised in a little town called Whittier. And so we were oh, hot, skipping the jump. Yeah, right down uh, so Imperial sick. Highway from... Yeah, you know, and, and I want to talk and I want to educate the listeners out there. So let's step back, back before we can talk about the legends that you supported. But I want to know more about your amazing group originally started out the Lady Birds and then on to Bertha, mm-hmm. B-I-R-T-H-A. So let's start with Lady Birds first. What was the genesis of that group and uh, how much success did you guys actually have as an all-girl band back then? As the Lady Birds, well, you know, it, we had, we were, you know, sort of really... Uh, one of the first all-girl bands, and mm-hmm. um, uh, it was kind of weird. It was like, oh, it's okay, and ladylike if you play guitar or piano, but don't play the drums and don't play the bass, right. you know. 
And so we did very well. And, and uh, when everybody else, I was in high school, when everybody else went to the prom the same night, uh, my band opened for the Rolling Stones. And um, they came to our hotel room the night before thinking, yeah, this will be easy. And they're smoking <laughs> cigarettes and stuff. And, and, you know, we're like virgins. And we're like, oh, my God, you know, I really like the Beatles right. better. But anyway, so when they left, um, I picked up all the cigarette butts. And the next day when everybody was showing their prom picture and all, you know, their corsage and everything, I was selling the Rolling Stones cigarette butts. Classic. Classic. You know, I knew you know, that and, my and, but, life was going to be different. <laughs> and that's and that's the thing. Did you know, and I want to know the, the uh, time span from when you were with the Ladybirds and when you were with Bertha. What was the time difference between when you knew you were grounded in music to the first time you got a major gig backing up? Um, I don't want to, I want to know, ask you the question. Who were the first people you backed up? Was it Linda Ron Sad was it James Taylor, Warren Zevon, Neil Young? Share with the listeners who it was the first time you walked on set, uh, on stage with the Who's Who of Players. Well, Bertha opened for BB King on a European tour, ah, and that was really fun. You know, I mean, these are some seasoned guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. And no doubt. and and it was so fun. I mean, it was just amazing fun. And uh, let's see, from the Lady Birds. Bertha. I mean, the Ladybirds were getting married and having children and stuff, and I was like, hmm, no, I still want to do this. I want to see the world. Um, and, um, and you know, I don't want to do that route. Uh, and then Bertha was my friend that I knew since I was 12, uh, played guitar, and um, her name was Shelly Pinzato. Uh, she's mm-hmm. deceased now, but um, I had known her, you know, my whole life. And we would always sit around and sing harmonies and, and play. I'd play bass, play guitar. And uh, so we were sort of the nucleus of that band. And we were signed to ABC Dunhill. Um, and we we opened for all kinds of people on concert stages. Um, Three Dog Night, we did a tour with. <laughs> there were fun times. Um, oh, absolutely. And uh, so the first person where I realized I had a sound uh, was somebody named Catfish Hodge, who was this big, freckle-faced, red-haired guitar player that opened for us. And we used to get together and eat pies <laughs> and laugh Great. and tell stories. And when I was singing <clears throat> on his record, actually, actually, it was Bonnie. I met Bonnie first, I think. Mm-hmm. No, he introduced me to Bonnie Rake. Um, That's right. And Bonnie and I hit it off like two old sailors. And uh, she had me sing on her record, and that's where I met a lot of people. I met, you know, uh, J.D. Souther. He came in to the studio walking on his hands. I said, hmm, okay, this guy is going to be interesting. Interesting. Exactly. Yeah, and then I met uh, Michael McDonald. And uh, oh, this was before he was Steely Dan or, or, you know, the Doobie Brothers. And we got along so well. And I started using him on all the sessions because I could get triple scale for him. And so I said, hey, I'm going to get triple scale, too, because I'm the contractor. And so we worked right. on a lot of records together. So our, I did all the paperwork. And um, so that was really fun. And Bonnie had me go on the road with her. And uh, I met so many people through her. Etta James and Bonnie Raitt and I did uh, an Alan Toussaint record. And, uh, <laughs> boy, was that funny. Um, Etta James actually uh, had me come and, and guide her vocals, you know, uh, produce her vocals. I didn't get mm-hmm. credit, but... But she said, I, I don't want to do this by myself, so I want you to be there and tell me what to do. And I went, yeah, I, I can do that. You know, I can tell Done. her she's sharper for that, you know. And so then she introduced me to all these top uh, contractors at Astra. 
And uh, she said, you know, you girls should hire her. She's very good. And I think Etta to that, you know, to my <clears throat> today for that. And so Etta, she's so funny when she came to the session, she had, you know, pink fuzzy slippers on and, and, and she went into the kitchen and she put like all these plastic forks and knives in her hair. <laughs> she was, she's a really funny girl. I love her. Anyway, so Bonnie and I did a whole bunch of stuff together. We did no nudes together. Um, through her, I met James Taylor and um, Jackson Brown and Linda Rostad and and the Eagles and you know all. Of, it was like when we did no nudes. That was like the birth of that tribe, and it was. Um, I don't know if you remember that or not. You may not be old enough, but. Um, Oh, no nukes was uh, to stop nu- nuclear power plants, which are all now rotting and exploding. Right. And, and we went with Jackson. Uh, we went all around the country going to the nuclear power plant and protesting. And we did it very inexpensively. We were staying at Holiday Inns and people right, were right. picking us up in their, in their VW bus with tape all over it and, and they would make little sandwiches for us and stuff. And we would protest at the nuclear power plants. And we went to, I think it's somewhere near Denver, Colorado, uh, where all the nuclear warheads are. Wow. <laughs> it was an eye-opener. It was a real eye-opener. We had a lot of, like, death threats and all kinds of stuff from the no-nukes thing. Luckily, we survived when, everything. When protesting, when protesting and actually using your name, your likeness, and your celebrity... To make you know, to make a point, you know, for the greater good, it's something I think is lost. I think we need to have more people with names uh, to protest, to use their likeness, their words, and hopefully, you know, we can touch on certain areas. I don't want to turn this into a political forum at all, but you know, this is we're in more need of it now than we've ever been. And and also, you brought up a, sec- a situation a little while ago. You brought up a, a name called Steely Dan. I want to give a special shout out and a prayer to the Becker family. We lost Walter Becker yeah. um, earlier this week on Aww. Sunday, and. Uh, with that went, yeah. uh, you know, went the history of uh, Steely Dan. Did you have any experience yeah. with uh, Walter as a musician? Well, we were signed to the same label, uh, Bertha. So they were always around. And we recorded uh, I'm a Fool to Do Your Dirty Work. <laughs> right. And, um, yeah. you know, I thought they were just brilliant, really brilliant. Um but I never like hung out with them or anything. But I right, had right. a lot of respect for them. And, you know, guys, uh, and you I, I want I want to tell you something. I want everybody, the listeners out there that are not familiar with Rosemary Butler's name, and if you're not, you need to cut off from that rock that you're hiding under. But go to YouTube. Uh-huh. And I want you to go ahead and, and I want you to search Rosemary Butler, and it's not Rosemary Butler the uh, uh, the uh, politician. This is Rosemary Butler not the her- singer and. Yeah, and I want you to go back and look at this. Look, look at her, her platform of what she did and how she lent her voice to so many different singers. Again, and I'm just amazed at this because, again, I'm a fan of everybody you worked with. I grew up with that. With uh, you know Jackson Brown's "Running on Empty," probably one of my favorite songs itself. Bonnie Raitt, my wife, is a huge fan. Boss Gags, you mentioned Boz, and Boss is out mm-hmm. right now with Michael. Uh, they're on a split tour right now. It's either Michael yeah. McDonald and Boss Gags or Michael McDonald and uh, Kenny Loggins. Um, but I want oh, to yeah. ask a question, and I don't know if it's going to be a fair question, honey, but I want you to put your thinking cap on for a second. Um, I'm, I just want to talk about the notables. Let's start out with uh, with Linda Ronstadt. God bless her heart. And one of the most yeah. amazing voices in, in in rock history. With that said, you, can you just think think about this? What was your favorite song when you were on stage with Linda? What song did you enjoy singing with her the most? Oh, boy. So many. You know, yeah. I loved watching her sit on the moon and sing, you know, and <laughs> um, sometimes, I mean, when you're on stage with her, you're just kind of going into a bliss state, you know, because it's so beautiful and so in tune and, right, and the right. band is so good and it's just like a bliss state there. Um, geez, if I had to pick one, um, pick, one. Uh, pick one, I used to love uh, one. Well, you know, she had so many different careers, you know, yes, singing yes. folk and then rock and then, you know, uh, jazz and 
you know, she gave up the English language and was singing in Spanish and, you know, she Mm -hmm. did opera. And I mean, she was like, God, this girl could do anything. And I was How early in her career were you working with her? Were you in, uh, was when you were working with her, was her band basically the Eagles at that time or did she had moved on? Later. I wasn't in the folk period. I was in the rock period. More like, um, uh, you know, um, yeah, the more and rock stuff is what I did. Um, it's a, it's an unfair question. Thinking, I understand that. I, I, I'm trying to think, you know, there was, uh, so many that would just practically bring me to tears because they were yeah. so pure and I just love and that I learned so much as a person from her because she is really soft power. I mean, she's in control, but she's never nasty. She's never hard. She never yells. She gets what she wants done, and people just worship her, you know, for getting to work with her. Um, And God bless her, you know. She's she's really, I was so proud of her. You know, she has a book, Mm -hmm. and she's been going around, you know, with her Parkinson's and, um, you know, showing uh, her different experiences and um, I think she's just one of the most courageous people on the earth. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, she's just, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's really hard to change your style for one thing. Cause I, of course I'm doing another, I'm doing another album. And we're going to talk uh, about that also you. because we can't go 30 years between albums with you, girl. It's not fair to the listeners out there. And, uh, <laughs> and I guess, you know, well, and let's talk about it. Your first album that came out, you released a solo album called Rose back in 1983. And and, and then you're, that, correct me if I'm wrong, and then you waited mm-hmm. so long to bring out another album 30 years later, just, you, you know, just, uh, you just watch me. And that was released in yeah. 2013. And I want to pick up more yeah. about that too as we go back, because we only uh, got one minute left. That light is flashing right now. And I've got so many questions okay. I want to ask you uh, in the short yeah. time that we have with you, you know, to take a 40-year career let alone put it in two hours, but put it in one hour. We're going to do our damnedest right now. So when we come back, we're going to get more involved and, uh, and we're going to find about it. And we're going to find out why, other than being busy and being blessed to be gainfully employed, why it's taken you so long between albums to, you know, to, to spotlight your voice up front versus in the back you know, supporting. And I want to know more about yeah. you and, uh, and your vibe with Bonnie and your vibe with Warren Zevon and James and so on and so forth. And, how did, what yeah. it is that they hired you and how beautifully your voice, you know, blended and melded with theirs. I want to find out more because we have a lot of singers that are listening in today and including Melanie Taylor and, uh, and, uh, Lynn Fidemont and so on. So they're all excited to hear from, you know, from the, the, the maestra, as they say in the business. So with that said, Hi, we've got you. four seconds left and this is Jackie Bertoni brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network. Um, Jackie's group with my new sister, Rosemary Butler. Guys, don't go anywhere. We've got so much more in the next two seconds to talk about. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after a short break. Stay tuned. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. The Moyer Entertainment Group, in conjunction with Adario, Radio Airplay, and Loop is keeping music in our local schools and presenting local talent to the world through the Temecula Valley Music Awards. Submissions for entry into the TVMA 2017 season are now open in all genres, including a youth category for artists under 18 for the October 7th Star Studded Awards Show, where 100% of the proceeds go towards supporting local music education in the Temecula Valley. Details, tvmawards.org. Make 
this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Todd Zuckerman from the rock band Sticks, and you're listening to my pal Jackie Bertoni on Jackie's Groove. Groove on, motherfuckers. <laughs> Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Everybody, welcome back to segment number two. This is Jackie Bertoni, and this is Jackie's Groove. Hey, that voice you heard in that background, supporting that big voice up front, is none other than the beautiful Rosemary Butler. Rosemary, welcome back, my girl. Yeah. You know, I've got got so many questions, and I wanted to just blow on through a couple of them. I asked you in the last segment about Linda Ronson, and again, God bless her, and thank her for coming forward and uh, letting the public know exactly what is sidelining her career, for the lack of a better word. But you know what? Even though she may not be able to sing like the, the angel that she did, she can take mm-hmm. her likeness, her voice, and if she can make the quintessential one person happier or stronger through her message, then it's a good, good, beautiful thing. Like I say to myself, I'm not embarrassed. I'm not, I mean, the industry knows that, you know, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis myself back in 1996, leading a normal mm-hmm. life, if you will. Uh, but at the same mm-hmm. time, too, I speak all over the nation for the National Multiple Sclerosis Society and major drug companies as much. I don't do it anymore because I don't believe in the FDA, but that's another story on Oprah, if there you, you will. Go. But, uh, but the yeah. fact of the matter is, um, you know, it, it, you got to put the best foot forward out there. But then let's go back and talk about you for a second here. Now, we talked about Linda Ronstadt and the amazing woman this is. What man didn't have a crush on this woman if you had red, you know, blood running through your veins? This was the <laughs> woman that we all kind of emulated too. And then you walked out on stage with this girl by the name of Bonnie Raitt, my wife's, one of my wife's favorite singers. And, uh, and all the hits that she sang, I asked you an unfair question with regards to Linda. I'm going to ask that same unfair question to you with Bonnie. When you walked on stage with this woman with this soulful, soulful voice, what song did you sit there when you looked at the set list, you know, either attached to your microphone stand or at, at, the, at your feet by the wedge, your monitor? What song made you smile that you couldn't wait to get to to sing with Bonnie? Sure. Well, Runaway, My Little Runaway, that was the first uh, hit that ever went, right. you know, number one and gold and all that stuff. So it, I have a really nice uh, experience with that song with her. And um, and also, <laughs> there was, uh, yeah, on that song, it was Michael McDonald and I singing harmony. And it was the first mm-hmm. time we'd ever done a, a concert in the round. We did it at uh, the Forum. And after we sang that song with Bonnie, um, <clears throat> we thought, well, we'll go backstage. We're not on this next song. So <sighs> Michael's back there, and I'm there, and we think nobody can see us. And he goes, God, my shirt is all bunched up. I'm going to, like, fix it. So he unzips, and there's, like, thousands of people screaming, going, <laughs> 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 And Bonnie's going, what the hell is going on <laughs> Have you seen Michael lately? Yes, I see him when he comes into town. Yeah, I mean, I just, I literally talked to Mike last night because I told him that you were coming on the show. In fact, the oh. network uh, got, got a hold of me last night because we've introduced this great segment and a new series every Monday called Emerging Mondays on Jackie's Groove. And it's all paying it forward for the youngers, um, and, you know, the, the kids that are coming up that are making end runs in the industry. And the thing what? we laughed about, yeah, and um, so I got an e- I hosted last Monday – 
Dylan McDonald. Uh-huh. Now, Dylan, of course, is Michael and Amy's son, which I used to hold in my arms. And so it was a Hi. no-brainer. So Dylan Dylan comes on. He does a great, great, great show. Then I find out from the CEO um, last night that Dylan's numbers, his playbacks, his downloads were stronger than his mom and dad's. And Yay. this is what, yeah. And so I sent Michael and Amy a text last night, and I put down their just this just in dot dot dot. Dylan McDonald crushes his mother and father in the way of ratings. And so Michael writes back to me last night. He goes, fantastic. And Amy hasn't responded yet. And Dylan says, I'm going to be with mom and dad this coming weekend. I can't wait to shove it down their throat. So that to me was historical. You know, and, and I just thought that was just so, so classic. And, if, and honey, if you haven't got a chance to listen to Dylan McDonald, when you look at Dylan, he looks like a doppelganger of his father back in the early Steely Dan, Doobie mm-hmm. Brother days with that, you know, the dark beard and so on. But when he opens uh-huh. his mouth, he sounds like his mom. Nothing like Mike at all, just like his mom. So uh-huh. I, wanted to, yeah. I wanted to say that. So I'm sure Mike's out there listening today also, too. If he is, say hi to him real quick, and let's move on uh, to the next question I want to ask Mike. you here. Hi, Mike. Okay, and so, so now with that said, now let's talk about one of my favorite singers to this day, my favorite singer. Well, we just talked about is Michael McDonald, but my other favorite singer whose voice is so distinctive and has never changed, even in his older age, is this gentleman by the name James Taylor. The only change from him and me, we've lost the top of our hair. And that's okay also. <laughs> but but when he sings sh- um, my song, when he sings Shower, that song makes me cry okay. to this day. Um, was oh, there a song with, with James that when you backed him up, what song was it with him that you just kind of went, yeah, that's a song? Was it Mexico? Was it... Uh, Shower, share with me what song that you really loved with, with James. Okay, well, there's so many songs that I love. I know that the one that made most people in the audience cry was uh, uh, I'm Going to Carolina in My Mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the one that made me get goosebumps and stuff every time was uh, Only a Dream in Rio. And we oh, really? Went down really? To, yeah, we went down to uh, Brazil for the very first rock in, in Rio. Rock and and uh, yeah, and it was really fun. I mean, we were helicoptered in, and it was like their Woodstock or something. And right, of course. And it was a really big deal, and and a lot of people came in buses because they didn't have a car, you right. know. And there was only one lane in and one lane out, and they didn't have helicopters at night. So we sat in the bus at night. Oh well, for one thing. The Brazilians are so rhythmical, and they take Absolutely. their, you know, bic out or their uh, phone out, <clears throat> and they do their clicking in rhythm together, which I've never seen any other place in the world. And they just love to dance, and it's so beautiful in Brazil. But anyway, so we had great, great times there. But, you know, you'd be on the freeway, and there'd be a car, then a truck. Mm-hmm. Then there'd be, like, a little <laughs> donkey with a, a, a you know open back uh, and a guy sitting there, right. and they're on the freeway, on the freeway going down the road, and you're going, uh, let's pass this guy. <laughs> but anyway, so we had a wonderful time. We're trying to leave. I mean, James was like the Pope there. You know, people camped really? out all night around his his uh, balcony, and they all knew every song and sang it in English, which blew my mind. And um, they uh, they just adored him. Um, anyway, so we're trying to leave, and we're sitting for like six hours in this bus. And everybody has the same color bus, and there's right. no lane. So everybody's crowding in, trying to be the first one to get out. And there's no bathrooms, there's no water, there's no food, you know, <laughs> for six hours. So the band goes, hey, you know, I'm bored. Let's get out and walk around. So we started to walk around, and, and we got lost. We were like, oh, my God, I can't tell one bus from the other. How are we going to know it's our bus? And all these fumes, you know, were, were coming out of the bus from everybody just running their engine, you know, trying to get out. So sure. we had to hold hands and walk through all the buses. <laughs> To try to find our bus because we thought, oh, we're all going to get lost in Brazil. And um, so we got back, and James had been writing Only a Dream in Rio, and all he had was his guitar and a tourist uh, pamphlet about, you know, 
all the things you should see when you're in Brazil. Right. <laughs> and so he wrote that song, and it's it's a great song. Very, very cool. They, You know, his guitar playing is so rhythmical. And it, I, I always when I had my very, daughter, very percussive. Yeah, I always thought his playing was very, very percussive, and it was very straight ahead. He definitely played the groove, which I really, really enjoyed itself. Just to sit there, because, you know, James doesn't have this, I don't want to say he doesn't have this voice that's powerful. He doesn't have to have a powerful voice. His voice is pure. And, uh, and like is, I said again, to this, very yeah. Heartwarming. It's very rich, and he's very playful. You know, a mm-hmm. lot of people go on stage and they do the same exact show every night, but he is a, a riffer and a jammer, and so he will try to do it differently every night, you know, and take chances and run around. And, you know, he keeps it really, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen next, you know, but it, he rocks you know, Rosemary, everybody. You know, I'm looking at this, the lineup we're just talking about between Bonnie and Boz and, and James and Roseanne, um, but the exception of Roseanne, but James Taylor and, and Linda, um, I don't want to say I was privileged, but it was a sad occasion back in 1992 when we lost my musical brother, one of the greatest session drummers by the name of Jeff Picaro. And oh, yeah. uh, when, when we went to that funeral at uh, Forest Hills, uh, Forest Lawn, excuse Wasn't me. Wasn't that something with all those drummers? Yeah, honey, Woo! you know, that, that whole procession. But the thing is, you were there. You remember walking into the amphitheater that held 3,000 people. And there were two speakers at the opening of this amphitheater. I'm telling to the listeners out there. And every song that was coming through those speakers, and actually those speakers were Ramza. So if you're a club guy, you know R-A-M-S-A speakers. And uh, every song <laughs> coming out of those speakers was a song that Jeff played on, uh, Lido yeah. Shuffle. Uh, and so oh, on. God. And so in front of me, yeah, in front of me was Bonnie. Um, and the, behind me was uh, Boss Gags and Jackson Brown and, mm-hmm. uh, and Linda. And I mean, it's like, you couldn't help but be starstruck, and but we all made it a conscious decision that it was no business to be done on that day. And is that and what Rosemary just said too to the listeners out there? There were all these snare drums in the front of Jeff's casket, oh and, my and God. when and when uh, when um, uh, when he was eulogized, um, uh, it was amazing. Especially when the priest gave a sign of the cross and blessed his drumsticks, uh, oh. and he put it you know inside the casket. And James Keltner. Um, you know, uh, eulogized him, and then all the drummers got up and they did a snare drum procession out to the gravesite. You remember, like that was yesterday, don't you? Yes. I mean, oh when you God, think about that, huge. yeah. Woo. You know, and I, and I don't want to, I don't want to bring this stuff up, but the bottom line is, Rosemary, you know, you and I, we're not spring chickens anymore. We're getting to the age now where we are losing brothers and sisters. I mean, when when they go young, that's one thing, but when you've had a a beautiful long long life, then you have nothing but to sit back and think about. How beautiful things were, but you know, you, we've lost people like you know, um, uh, uh, the, all the again the recents I just said with Walter Becker, uh, but Chris mm-hmm. Cornell, and then um, and then the gentleman from um, uh, what was his name? Uh, the gentleman from I, I'm losing my mind here because I'm getting watery. I don't even want to think about it. But too many people are going too fast, and the fact yeah. of the matter is, we yeah. have we have to we have to embrace what we're here right now because the bottom line is, my mom always said one thing. If it's not health related, it's all bullshit. And I know a lot of very healthy, miserable people in my lifetime. I choose to stay away from them, and that's why I I I, I levitate to beautiful you know uh, interviews like I'm doing right now with Rosemary. So Rosemary, let me step back here for a oh. second again. So going yeah. back to that, and God bless you, Jeff. God bless you, and God bless Mike Picaro and the people we've lost too much. So we go through yeah. this now. We go through our lives, and we talked about Bonnie. We talked about um, the other singers, but I want to know too. With your voice as pure and as strong as it is, I, I have Thank a you. hard time believing that you were actually backing Boz up with such that his voice was so opposite of what you, uh, that you were singing. When you were hired by Bonnie and by Boz and by Jackson, were you also maybe a single, a double, or a trio part of background singers? Tell me about that setup and how that worked. Uh, with Bonnie, it was, it was uh, mostly Trebo uh, and I and uh, the guitar player, um, one time I was singing with Bonnie and I was backstage and I was, you know, just running over the top harmony part. And mm-hmm. I had my back to the door and Joni Mitchell walked in and she sang the whole song on the bottom before I even met her. And I was like, Crazy. I know who you are. Yeah, man. <laughs> one of you know, I see this anyway, all, all... all... With... Go ahead. Oh, um, with Jackson, it was Doug Haywood. 
and he's a Amazing. wonderful musician also. You know, he plays saxophone, he plays bass and guitar and banjo, and, you know, he's a really funny kid. Love him. We just had a magic are... plan. In fact, the three of us are singing on Travel My Love on my record. Oh, really? Yeah, on number you know five. What? And that's so cool because you're talking about you know, the, the great voices. I mean, Amy McDonald has a new album out right now called um, Light on My Path. And she uh, employed, um, yeah, David Crosby singing background. Uh, David mm-hmm. Pack is singing background, who's coming on the show, um, hopefully within the next three weeks. And with that itself, okay. I mean, I'm really, I, I really uh, kind of OD'd on your music. I downloaded, yes, I paid for your music, as I pay for all my brothers and sisters out there. And I just, I love the dichotomy of different sounds that you 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 uh, that you put across. I mean, it's a situation where you, with all the different vocal techniques, the vocal prowessness that you've had with these people, was there any group or any person you were hired by that was really difficult for Rosemary? Well, or was everything it, a pretty much a walk in the park? Well, you know, we did um, <clears throat> living with war. I, I was hired to contract. Um, a hundred voices practically overnight for, uh, to do that album and conduct it. And, um, it was Neil Young and uh, he has a quirky sounding voice, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. And you get a hundred people to sing exactly like he did. <laughs> it's hard. Um, no but doubt. you know, I had the cream of the crop of ballet there. Everybody, the very top people there and they were excellent. And uh, that was really, really fun. And we also did a, uh, there's a, on one of the versions of Living With War, there is a DVD with us on it singing. And Ellis Hall, who. uh, I know my Ellis. uh, Power, power days, baby. Well, he also uh, was signed to Ray Charles. And Mm -hmm. when Ray died, he got all of his charts, orchestra charts and stuff. And he Mm -hmm. goes around the country playing with all the local symphonies with doing Ray. He's such a soulful guy. And we, we had him there and he did a beautiful, you know, step out at the end uh, of America, the beautiful. Um, But, but anyway, so that was, that was uh, a challenge. And I, I, my very first singing student that I ever worked with as a teacher was uh, Randy Newman. Hey, honey, I want you to hold that thought. Hold that thought right now because we're getting ready to run out of sick. There's no way. Girls, shame on you for not doing two hours right now because there's a thousand messages and a thousand questions and just only one second. Well, we can continue. We can continue. We will. Well, we'll talk about that on the break. So with that said, guys, I hope you're having a great time like I am. I'm looking at all these notes of this woman by the name of Rosemary Butler, but essential uh, support voice of the stars that are on the marketplace. So with that said, guys, Jackie Bertoni, Jackie's Brew, brought to you by Inner Talk Radio Network, you're into all things music. We're going to be back on this last segment, and it's all segments going to be about how to stock Rosemary and how to add some money into her bank account. So with that said, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on segment number three. The short message, don't go Hi, anywhere. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on InterTalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real-time ADR work, remote recording and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high-quality audio and video connection over the Internet for all of your production needs. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. 
Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Michael McDonald, and you're listening to my good buddy Jackie Bertoni on Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Hey guys, it's Jackie Bertoni. Final segment, segment number three of a, only a short one-hour interview with this this legend. Her name is Rosemary Butler. And you guys, before I go any further, I just want to ask everybody to do yourselves a favor and do us a favor for the network. When you can't listen to us live, and shame on you, but we understand that you have a nine to five job, but you can't always do it. So go to uh, iTunes or go to Google Play and download our easy to use and easy to navigate application. It's two words. First is Intertalk. Second one is Radio. So you can take Jackie's groove and the plethora of shows with you on the go. So with that said, hey, you know, we talked about this right on the break there, um, Miss Butler, and I want to bring on the CEO who you had the pr- um, privilege of meeting. I didn't get a chance to give you a hug because I was sitting in a hospital bed. So with that said, um, uh, d- do me a favor, Rosemary, say hi to Florentino. Florentino, say hi to Miss Butler, please. Hey, Rosemary. Hi, Florentino. Oh, I love the way you say my name. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting chills, little tingles all over the place. <laughs> So, hey, you have been having an awesome, awesome interview with Jackie, and your, well, your history is just amazing. I just, uh, you know, you know, it, it, it's so enriching to our network because that's what it's all about. Is is we we want to spotlight people that, uh, uh, you know. Have, well, I really appreciate it, and it's a wonderful service that you do for us singers. Well, we, we 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 uh, we we feel that uh, the players, the artists, the people that are behind the scenes. Um, you know, yeah, some of these, you know, they're, they're, they're the, uh, you know, the, the, the Beyonce's of the world that get a little bit of attention, but you know, the people that, uh, I think really kind of power this industry don't always kind of get the recognition nor the attention. And, uh, do the people that are trying to come up in this industry get the knowledge that you folks are able to provide to them? And that's why we do this. We can mentor by the best. Yes, you know, where we, you know, we, with generations, and that's one of the things that we've recognized with this generation because of the way they consume content nowadays. That they don't always get that. They don't always uh, like, like Jack, Jack will always bring up. They don't always see liner notes. They don't always uh, know the histories of how this music was made, and you know where that sound they got, where Bruno Mars's sound came from, because he's not the inventor of that sound. It came generations right. way before him. So. You know, I just, we appreciate and some of that dancing too is the, uh, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, that was, right. I, I used to see the, all the great bands that would have that type of, you know, you know, that type of, uh, uh, choreographed. James Brown kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, this segment really is about people knowing and finding about who you are and where they can, as J- Jackie will, uh, playfully say, stalk you. <laughs> not necessarily in real terms, but obviously in just wanting to know as much about Rosemary because an hour, even two hours, is never going to be enough for such an impactful oh, career. So Very, very sweet. Thank you because I'm going to put this on my website when, ooh, when, I, when you get it all done. Thank you. You're, you're RosemaryButler.com. RosemaryButler.com. How about Facebook and, and um, oh, Instagram? Oh, yeah, Facebook, and all that stuff? everything. You Twitter, know. Twitter. I'll put it everywhere. Is it uh, Twitter uh, at Rosemary Butler? Twitter, yeah. Okay, very cool. Everything. 
everything. Well, people, people, people need to, to to learn more. That's all I, I, you know, it's so funny. You think you know somebody. Anything that I can, you know, do to help somebody. I mean, so many people helped me were door openers for me and believed in me. And, you know, I would, you know, I'm also a vocal coach too. And I teach on Skype and also, uh, uh, Facebook and, uh, I, uh, I'm a mentor too. I, I am also a producer. I just produced, you know, co-produced my album, uh, what, uh, you just watch me and, um, and also, uh, Megan Monroe. I love producing cause I've had so many, 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 many hours in the studio and it's very natural for me and I love it. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely girl. And uh, you, know, you, you keep saying thank you to Florentino and myself. It's us who are thanking you yes. uh, for gracing our oh. stage. It's the, it's, it's names like you. It's unfortunately, it's the names like you and myself that are below the marquee uh, that are supporting the names above the marquee. And we always don't get the just due that we deserve. And uh, you know, you know, I, we're finally. I, uh, did you watch the Olympics when they were in China and they mm-hmm. had Sarah, Bright, Sarah Bright, Brightman singing on the world right. with their mm-hmm. famous opera singer? Um, <clears throat> there was somebody in the parade there and they had like. Uh, all these people supporting this one dancer and she was beautiful and she was almost, I don't know what, some kind of float or something, but they were carrying it. And I thought, you know, that is a snapshot of what this business is like. It's not really about the star. It's about a whole machine, how everybody gets it out there, believes in it, gets something from it, you know, and the people that buy it. It, it's just a symbol, a person standing on the top. You know what Absolutely. I mean? But I got to it sing takes a village. There. Yeah, it does. It really the does. Village. <laughs> and the new yes. new kids that are coming up, boy, it's a whole different paradigm, you know, with the music industry. It's so different now. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. you know, you, you know, really and Florentino, to- Florentino, stay on with me right now because I'm just looking at them. Stay on because I want you to throw back and forth. You always seem to get off of the air when I'm talking about this, but I want your opinion on this also. I, Rosemary, I ask okay. this to everybody. I ask this question to everybody yeah. itself, and this is definitely not soapbox, but you know, we're in the same age bracket, and I just want to know what Rosemary Butler, I'm going to ask you a personal question. This is not a to get you on a soapbox, but does Rosemary Butler understand the music business of today or the lack thereof? Share with us, share with Florentino and myself, what does your feel about this? Well... You know, it's a learning process, and it's continually changing. You have to keep up very fast. It's all about the Internet and uh, friends, helping friends and and keeping that music current, you know. um, But I don't think that I have to sound like a 20-year-old, you know, or have that kind of production value because, um, you know, there are – one thing I learned from James Taylor was that his music was timeless. It was classic. It didn't change every time there was disco or there was, you right. know, some punk stuff or, you know, grunge or whatever. I mean, he just was classic. It was just great songs, great singing, great players, you know, and it it just holds its own. You know, it's kind of timeless. So Do you see it coming back? Linda, you see the business coming back? We have to survive. I mean, it's very tough out there right now. I mean, he, here we were going on, you know, the Warner Brothers Learjet and staying in five-star hotels and going all over the world. And, uh, you know, the, the people today are, are touring with a, a, a moped and staying, sleeping in the forest, you know, or in their sleeping bag in order to get somebody to play their stuff. I mean, it's like, God, that is so hard, you know? Yeah, I want to jump in. Not everybody, but I mean, you know, a lot of people that, you know, are getting some covers are trying to promote themselves, and it's, I don't, uh, it just blows my mind. But they have to do everything because they don't, a lot of them, you know, in the beginning, as always, you have to be promoting yourself and and know what the industry is doing and, and get out there and shake hands and meet people and, be inspired by other people. And I think uh, uh, songwriters uh, have more of an insulated kind of career 
um, because they're a lot of them, you know, are not the big performers and stuff. They're they're great geniuses at what they do, and it's so you know I think it's exciting that anybody's making any money in this business now. But it will have to survive. I remember the disco period where they just put a disco beat on all these hit songs right. and then they played them at all the discos and nobody bought that stuff. It was like, you know, uh, it was all, you could hear it every day, everywhere. And, but, you know, there are some songs that, that are really classic um, and that really uh, touch people's hearts no matter what the frills around the song are like. You know what I mean? Um, Florentino, you, and, Florentino, jump in that you were going to ask her a question. Uh, well, I was going to actually make a statement, Rosemary. One of the things that we kind of see here, uh, actually one of the reasons why we started this network as well, is that uh, we kind of see the music industry going way, way back, like bar, far before be, uh, before there were records or recordings. Singles like the 50s? No, no, I'm talking about the 1500s. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, wow, yeah, you way, way back. really way back. Yeah, way, way back. And I, I think... There's going to be a new paradigm model, and it's and it's going to have to be this. Where uh, in those days, uh, you know, if you if you were Beethoven or you're Mozart or any of these other, you know, composers or, or, or traveling people, minstrels, traveling minstrels, <laughs> you were supported by patrons. You were you know, right. patrons of the art. Uh, predominantly, it would be nobles in the uh, in court or kings, queens, whoever it would be, but people with a lot of money, and they would right. basically pay you to write your. Your, you know, your 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 symphonies, your uh, play, pay you to 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 be at their court, uh, you know, be, to entertain the people because they wanted to to raise their standing within the industry. If Mozart was my boy and he wrote the, you know, he wrote a requiem for me or whatever it might be, he is, mm-hmm. he, he, you know, I, I look a lot better in in the, in the standings of nobility. So it's going to be a little bit it's different. The artist. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be a little bit different than that. I don't think it's going to be people or or individuals so much, but I think corporations are going to be stepping up. I know that's kind of counterproductive. Nice. Yeah, it's counterproductive to what we've seen from the uh, the 60s where it don't sell out. But in this particular case, I, I think this next generation of of, uh, of players are going to realize that they need corporations who need the uh, the, the voices of these artists to reach a gener- you know a new generation and a new market. And uh, even you know even the ones that have been established, we're starting to see more of that. And you know it's. That, that model is actually sponsorship. not. Sorry. Sponsorship. Yeah, sponsorship. So that model's Absolutely. not. That model is not anything new in this day and age. We see it in sports all the time. If you know these yeah. sports figures had to live off their short time and their salaries, especially ones that are not you know Michael Jordan or the other players, uh, they wouldn't uh-huh. necessarily be able to survive. They had to get sponsorships and other things to kind of keep that 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 keep their their lifestyle and their ball rolling. And it seems to be working in that industry. I think it's going to be the same thing in this industry where. Well, I was, I was very fortunate because I was playing house concert with Doug Haywood at Russ and Julie's house concert here. And, um, there happened to be somebody in the audience named Kevin Wax, who's a drummer and loves music. And, uh, he, is a very wealthy man and has a big beauty company called Earthly Body. Mm-hmm. It's worldwide. And he came up to me and he goes, oh, you know, I'd really like to buy your CD. And I went, you know, I've sold on a lot of CDs, but um, the last one I did was a long time ago, and I don't have a new one. And he goes, well, we'll see what we can do about that. And then I started hanging out with him and I'd take him to go and meet Michael McDonald or James Taylor or Linda Ross, you know, and we just hang and, and, and then he, uh, signed me to his label that he made just for me. And, uh, we did this album and now he's built a studio, a really state of the art, you know, studio so that I can do my next album. Wow, <laughs> and, you know, the chances of that happening are just, you know, one in a billion and I, I really hey. do feel like that, uh, you know, whenever times are slow or something, I feel like, you know, just be patient. The angels are ahead of you and they're setting things up and it's a timing okay. thing. So, because I could never have planned my career or, you know, taken any kind of, uh, I mean, I just happened to be very blessed that 
you know, I was in the right place at the right time with the right people, and it just yeah. exploded. But I could never have planned this. No one could have. Hey. You know? Rosemary, I'll, let me jump in here real quick because we've got three minutes left and I've got to, in, in Florence, you can hang or not, but it's up to you. But I want to ask you a question, girl. And it's something that you just brought into. You walked this perfectly into it about having patience and so on. But let me ask you this yeah. question. Since your your beautiful, beautiful career has been so blessed for those ears who have been, you know, uh, who have been welcomed to that. But let me ask you this question. If Rosemary Butler wasn't in the music business, wasn't a singer, a lead singer mm-hmm. or a background singer, what would Rosemary be doing today? Oh, wow. Well. Um, it had nothing to do with music? Nothing. I'd probably be, uh, you know, a stewardess. Or something. <laughs> I yeah. love to travel. I love to travel. And I, and I love working on benefit concerts and, you know, being active voice for causes and things like that. Uh, I would... I would probably be some sort of activist. Um, and guys, and I want and I want the listeners out there to also understand that that Rosemary it goes above and beyond being a background singer. So again, she's a co-contractor of the Hundred Voice Choir on Neil Young's um, album called "Living with War." She mentioned that before, and she co-founded the National uh, Enquirer, a LA-based volunteer choir with a singer, your oh, yeah. partner, singer lyricist uh, Deborah Pearl, and that's P E A R L. Yeah. I want you guys to check that out, and also too, yeah. as I said too. Um, Rosemary's uh, got an album out right now, the first in 30 years, called Just You Watch Me. I have it. I downloaded it. And uh, that was Thank released you. in 2013, which seems like it was a millennial ago. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, we're all about putting it forward. I'm going to have, you know, I hate the sound of this term, but it sounds kind of cool. I'm going to have my people call your people. And uh, we're going to get you We're going to get you back on. And uh, and I really want to, you know, do it, like you said before, for the possibility of doing something live. So we can see what you're all about in that way of not just conversation, but how you command a stage and so on. And I'll let Florentino, um, take, uh, you know, I'll let him pioneer this and uh, champion this, if you will. And we want to welcome oh, you, you back with open arms, if at all possible. Yeah, we and, to uh, well, that was a video I'm going to be doing a thing uh, in Calabasas uh, for the concerts across America to end gun violence. And so maybe we can tape that live or the, the tribe is doing something at the L Ray theater, December 9th to feed LA homeless. That'd be good. Whatever, yeah, whatever LA. we can do to put our best foot forward, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll definitely, we'll get, reach out to you right after this and, uh, we'll kind of talk oh, about thank plan. But you. the L Ray might be a really fun one. Cause that's a little bit closer for us. And obviously, you know, we all want to do something about the, the current conditions of, uh, the, the people who are, Oh, my goodness, yes. The world is going really very dramatic right now. And Sweetheart, you know what's going even more dramatic right now? We're, we're down to the last uh, 15 seconds, so I don't, I don't want to interrupt, but I have to because that light's going to flash okay. and Paul's going to pull me off the air. So with that said, I want everybody to applaud. And if you have your hands on the steering wheels, don't do that. And thank personally from our company to your company to your ears. Miss Rose and Rosemary Butler. Rosemary, thank you for being part of this. You've been officially jumped in, so now there's no getting out, girl. So with that said, everybody, please, please always check our website. That's JackieGroup.com. And we just want to say thank you, Rosemary. We love you, girl. And we'll talk to you soon, guys. Jackie for Tony, Jackie's Group, Bunch of Talk Radio Network. You're into all things music. Peace through music, Rosemary. I love you, girl. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one song mix offer you know what's all around you every waking moment of your life marketing you're choking on it i'm scott robertson and when it comes to strategic pr branding and marketing i've seen it all and actually i'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps 
Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com.